The meeting of the Committee of the Whole is called to order. Nice to see everybody here on this nice warm evening. And I thank you, Mr. Um, Tom Titik, for being here. You are our entertainment, our information for the evening. It is you. Um, we do have to do a little housekeeping first, and then it will be you that you will be, we will be listening to you, and you will be answering our questions. Thank you for being here. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the August 18 meeting. So moved. I hear a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the August 18th, or the July 18 meeting. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor vote aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, you have a question. Do we have attendance? Yeah. Yes. It's July 18th. It's not July 18th. That would be yes. Is the 20th not the 18th? It was July, not August. Yes, right, it was July. <laughs> yeah. right. But it was the 20th, not the 18th. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness sakes. The minutes were for July 18th, not August, no, no for July, July 20th, 20th not, not August, August 18th. 18th. Right. Does that all make sense now? Yep. And Sue, would you call the roll? Bauman. Excused. Deberg. Here. Eberg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Excused. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Excused. Van Akron. Here. And Vanderweel. Here. 13 present. Thank you, sir. Yep. Going on to item number three on our agenda. RO number 174-05-06 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Michael Harvey, president of Vander Vart Holding Company, Inc., regarding the city's possible interest in their property for the new police station and possible options of purchase and or land swap. Thank you, Mr. Teeting. Good evening, everybody. His mic is on. So I guess I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. I did distribute a map of the property, and I also distributed a little bit of an outline on some of the topics that I had heard were points of contention and or interest. Yeah. And I'm not. Excuse me, you have to move very close. Oh, to that I'm microphone. sorry. I'll get it. How's that? There. Is that yeah. better? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. And uh, I'm not here to sell Vandervart per se as the property. I'm just here as a, as a uh, employee of Vandervart to answer your questions and uh, see if there's anything that might be of interest and maybe we can come to some conclusion. Uh, I did review Mr. Harvey's, uh, who happens to be our owner, uh, his communique from the 15th of June and the 12th of July, and both of those communiques kind of highlight the outline that I just put together. Uh, Vandervaart, as I said, uh, we have 15 acres. There was contention on whether it was 15 or 19 or whatever, but we have 15 uh, that we would be interested in selling. Uh, the um, corporate office building and our building supply location would be two buildings and adjacent property that would we keep. Um, I, there was some talk about losing revenue from the city and I think we pay the city roughly $30,000 a year in property taxes and, and other fees. And then there was a talk about the property being flooded uh, from time to time and I personally witnessed the last two 100 year floods and the property primarily is located by our steel building and that gets maybe four feet of water and one of the problems was all the city streets seem to empty into South Business Drive and if you go south to um, McDonald's and uh, Alpine Insulation that's roughly I'll say the top of the hill and all that water comes racing down the railroad tracks to um, the river and we just happen to have a low spot in our property where it likes to pool or lagoon. So if a person was to put something in there, they would need roughly four to six feet, and that should uh, alleviate that. But uh, Tom Holton has given me in writing assurance that it won't flood with the new storm sewer and South <laughs> Business Drive, and of course I'm kidding. Um, 
We do have a stormwater site. We made some recommendations that the DNR had implemented back about 10 years ago. So we do keep a lot of our surface water out of the city storm sewers. Um, we try to run it into green areas, which is a hot topic nowadays where a lot of your storm water goes into a green area, filters, and then can go into the lakes and the rivers. Uh, a couple years ago, I had heard that when the city was working on retention ponds that the city of that the city was looking at the Vander, Vandervaart site as a potential uh, site for a retention pond, and quite honestly, I think it would make a good one. And also, being a business there since 1888, uh, we had underground storage tanks for fuel, and back in the 80s when PECFA was alive and well, uh, we had all of those tanks removed and had DNR closure reports on that. And quite honestly, we've been the only business on that site since 1888, and we use sand, stone, water, and cement, very basic materials, and don't really generate or have hazardous wastes. The only thing we've been cited for is a high pH, but with acid rain, I thought that was a good thing. Um, and the last item was the land swap. That was something that we threw out but is not necessarily contingent on this. Our owner has other property that he's purchased, and uh, we would be using that for our facility if need be. But we are moving. It's nothing, nothing against the city, but we need to um, consolidate two locations uh, for economic reasons. So with that, that's basically what my presentation consisted of, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Tietig. Um, the land swap is of possible interest. However, did I hear you? You uh, and Vandervaart will be moving to consolidation on a site that you already own? Our owner has purchased a site outside of the city limits, yes. And the plan and is to consolidate there? Our Sheboygan location and Sheboygan Falls location. We don't manufacture pipe. We don't manufacture ready-mix concrete anymore. Uh, we primarily just have a building materials supply. And uh, for a lot of our business, it's hard for us to get in and out uh, because of the city streets and the like. And time is of essence in the delivery of our products. So that's what we're looking for. If there would, if, if Vandervaart is possibly interested in a, a land swap of some sort, for what would they use the, the swapped land? We were looking at the industrial park. In fact, uh, there is one location out there that would suit, and that is the 14.53 acres on the southeast elevation next to the Crossroads Supper Club and or bar, but that's not, uh, we would use that for our building materials and ready mix. We have a Sheboygan Falls location, which is ready mix concrete, and the covenants of the uh, industrial park don't like open um, aggregate storage, and there's alternate ways to do it with silos and the like, but of course it's more expensive for us. So to answer your question, we would, we would move our facility there and sell the other facility to other interested parties. It, it's, it's, it's not a cast in concrete uh, situation, if you will, but it was one that our owner was willing to explore. Was Vandervaart uh, considering straight up trade, or, or, or do you not know? Uh, it wouldn't be an equal trade, no because the industrial park is 25,000 an acre and our property is valued at 100,000 an acre, which we just had a current uh, survey, uh, not a survey, but a current um, um, appraisal done and that was right in the ballpark. Thank you so much. Sure. I'll bet we have more questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Alderman Graf. Thank you. Um, regarding the, um, the 15 acres, is it, all, the total 15 acres, or can it be like, say, eight acres of that? Or um, did you want to sell the entire 15 acres? Yes. Okay. And then how much, how big is the parcel, our parcels one and three? Is that another four acres? I would say roughly, yes. Uh, we also sold the city 
uh, the portion underneath the Vidoc, and at one time we did own the pie shape that Kramer now currently owns to the south of Broadway. So we haven't had an actual survey done since the Vidoc went down, and that parcel was sold to the city. And um, if you look at the map that I had given you, it shows our office site, but if we drew a straight line uh, east of par at the bottom of parcel number one, that could roughly be four acres, correct? Okay, and then um, it's, you've got in your, your uh, paper, does not include offices located at parcels. Um, parcels one and three may be purchased at a later time. Correct. Do you have a later time in mind? A year, two years. We have someone interested in our office building right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Alderman Sagali. Thank you. Do you want me to stand? If you'd like, you okay. certainly may. Okay. Um, if I may please ask. Sure. Um, your property that you have bought is out on Highway 42, am I correct? I believe so. Okay, so people are talking about a tax revenue. So either way, if people are saying if we would purchase this land for the police station site, we would be losing that tax revenue. But if you move out to Highway 42, we're going to be losing that tax revenue altogether anyway. Correct, from correct? Vandervert's standpoint, yes. Okay, um, I guess... Um, if I can just add, only until you sell it to someone else, otherwise he's required to pay the tax revenue. Okay. But it's, 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 to me, it's like um, being a win-win situation here for the city of Sheboygan. If we would purchase those 15 acres and take so many acres for our police station and the rest of the parcels, since the city is looking for land to, uh, to sell it to other businesses, we could then sell those properties, like one or two acres, to another business. And this way we would be making money for the city and also bringing in the tax base. So when it comes to Vandevart, to me, it's a win-win situation here. Thank you, Alderman Segal. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, has your property been for sale, or is this kind of a, you just kind of, it's, no, we, look at you? We, we've been looking at doing this for the last, I would say, eight years. And I would say five or six years ago, we, we're just starting to put feelers out. Okay. We've talked to people over the years. This is nothing new. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. So the sale of this land has been of interest to you for a number of years? Correct. Okay, thank you so much. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, have, have you ever addressed the city before as far as um, the city planning and development and made them aware of um, any other interests in property all in the industrial park? Through informal conversations. Okay. And secondly, um, have you had any inquiries um, concerning the property? For instance, if the city would purchase the full 15 acres, are there any other developers that would want a portion of that? There have been individuals, and everybody wants a small piece of it, and a lot of people are looking at the south portion, which is now on Broadway, um, now that Broadway Viaduct came down. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, can you oh, excuse me, Alman, could you repeat your question? I didn't hear your question, I'm sorry. Which part? The last one. Um, if they had any inquiries of develop, developers interested in the in the any of the acreage, in which he he said oh, he, okay. they did. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Any further questions? Alderman Elgenberg. Yes, sir. thank you, Madam Chairman. I think I'd have a question for Paulette in terms of the best use for that uh, property. Uh, if uh, it's an industrial use, could we expect to get the $100,000 per acre versus the $25,000 that we currently have available in uh, our industrial park? And uh, is there any other sizable plot of land like that available uh, in the city? Thank you. Um, there's pro there are probably, well, and, and through the site selection for the police station, um, you probably found out that there aren't a lot of sites of that magnitude. Um, there are sites available, but you have to, multiple owners, multiple buildings, demolition costs, and other costs involved. Um, obviously, this is one of the, the sites that we scored at a later date. And as far as a, a price per acre, we were working off of the um, the 100,000 
dollars per acre that had been quoted. And then um, I think the, the amount that was mentioned for the industrial park or city business center was 25 an acre, and it's actually 22. And so there's some type of a difference. But I think without really getting a full-blown appraisal, I can't tell you whether or not you know, that land is, would be valued at 100000 per acre. I know that land to the south is valued a little bit higher than the interior of the city, but to give you an actual estimate, I can't do that. If you were to look at exclusive of a police station, uh, the what type of, would you see that as industrial? Would you see that as business? How would, would you see it as residential? And again, I realize that there are zoning configurations, you know, that, that fit into that neighborhood. But if you were to look at what in your definition would be, other than a police station, best use, where might that conversation go? Well, off of the top of my head, just from what's happening on South Business Drive, the highest and best use would probably be commercial. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Paul Anders. Thank you, Eldon Berg. Any further questions by any alderman? A follow-up um, for Paulette. And how much does commercial normally purchase uh, land per acre for? Well, it depends. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think really without an appraisal, I, you know, I, I can't quote you an amount, but um, it, it depends on the, the amount of demolition needed, the amount of fill needed, and you did mention that it needed some fill on the site, um, access, visibility. So, you know, you're, I think on, on this particular piece of property, which was uh, a former, in, more of an industrial site, and if it would convert over to, I think the $100,000 per acre kind of dictates that it would end up being something more commercial. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Our most recent appraisal came in higher than $100,000, but that's you know, just a point of, that I wanted to make. Thank you. I had a couple of questions about the, the low grade in part of the areas. And, and you seem to feel that there isn't a whole lot of problem with that. I was going to ask Tom Holton as an engineer, because I certainly don't know. I have to believe you and Tom Holton both. That site could be filled. You that just have to, be, be have, to be, have to be engineered filled. You have to be careful what you put in there and how you placed it, but it could be filled to, to bring out of the uh, lower area. And, of course, it, I, if I ask the question a little or a lot, that doesn't say much. A little or a lot doesn't mean much. But <laughs> it would quite it a be bit. a little or a lot? It would be a lot. A lot. Yes, I couldn't tell you how many yards would be a lot. One, one point I'd like to make about the fill, there's a lot of fill around the edges of that property and it could be bulldozed into it. Uh, you see the uh, SDS building on the lake, uh, that is a nice terrace construction and then also, uh, uh, so with modern bulldozing methods and techniques, plus the DNR has approved concrete uh, and there's a lot of concrete paving that is there that could be ripped up and pushed over and with proper compaction you shouldn't have a problem with that. That's good information to know. I thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, that 100,000 per acre with a land swap, 100,000 per acre, would that come down significant, significantly if we made a deal somehow, or is that not an option? I was told by our owner that his, he's firm on the 100,000 an acre, and um, you know, that could lead to further discussion, but he's firm on that price. Thank you. Paulette, have you figured out that money-wise, how much it would cost us to purchase that? Well, for a land swap, it would be $78,000. Yes. I'm sorry, Paulette. $1.5 million. One, it would cost us $1.5 million. 15 times 100000 yes. Right. But if we do a swap, it would be a little less, a million. It would be $78,000 an acre, basically, for the 15 acres, whatever that comes to. Okay, we don't, have, I don't have a calculator. calculator. With us. <laughs> About $1.3 million? Thank you, Alderman Mann. All right. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, kind of probably more for Paulette, but maybe also for Tom. I know um, initially when this came up, 
I spoke to you about the land that the city owns in the town out by Heisen. Those conversations ever go anywhere? Or what was it, what, what would we put the value at that land if we swapped it? I mean, is that more valuable than the industrial park or less? I mean, certainly nobody's paying taxes on it now. I, I think the value of the Heisen property is if we keep it as a whole, and it's probably like um, the Vandervart property that if you start to parcel it off, it may diminish in value. And that was a rationale behind the, the Heisen piece is that it's 100 acre, that should be um, used, I think, in the um, when it was donated to the city. It has to be used for industrial purposes, or at least a primary portion of it. There's a small portion that can go to other uses. And as you parcel that off, you know, maybe sell it off to developers, it could potentially diminish that value. We thought if, if one day we get a large user, that um, that land could be more more valuable in the future. Let's find that large user. Yes, Mr. Tietik. I think there might be some property that our owner owns that's out in that area also, so it could be adjacent to it. I don't know. I didn't know the city had property out there. Oh. Yes, I think, I think that um, the Heisen company family deeded that to the city for specific purposes. Yes, Paulette? At this point in time, it's not contiguous to the city. Right. And it would take quite a bit of... Um, other additional annexation in order to bring it in because it's not contiguous to the city then but but it belongs to the city it would still be our responsibility for sewer we water. could we could develop it as a town parcel but we wouldn't um, we wouldn't have any access to the taxes that come in I mean I but see. we could sell it off as a city parcel Any further questions? Any? Yes, Alderman Groff. Thank you. For Paulette, again, um, if we would, would do this trade and we would acquire um, this additional acreage on the Vandervaart property and we'd use, say, let's just say, let, we'd do, use five acres and we'd have 10 to sell. Presently in our, in our industrial park, we have several um, 10 acre sites available, is that correct? Or? A few, we don't have, um, I think that the largest parcel that we have remaining is this 14.53, with maybe a couple that are around 10, and then some smaller. So we have about roughly 75 acres left. How, how are we doing with our advertising and promoting the sale of this land so that um, we do have our, um, a full industrial park, much less taking on additional land that we would have to sell. And what do you have any feelings right now on, is there a lot of call for land? I know if we look at Washington um, Square, for instance, our um, center, whatever it's called, uh, there's a lot of land out there that's available also that, um, do we have any offers on any of that or is that something that you can't tell us about? Or? In the business center? Is yes. that um, we've, we've had, and whether or not, I don't recall if they've closed yet, but we've had two sales this year. We've had um, some renewed interest in the park, and it depends on the season. But mostly what we've, we've been selling off the park by, I want to say word of mouth, but we do promote the park. It's on Forward Wisconsin's website, a Wisconsin site's website. Um, but what we've had and what most economic development that occurs in the city, or a great percentage of it, has to do with our local businesses expanding, and we've seen quite a bit of that in our business center. And I don't know if that's answered your question or not. Well, I'm just wondering, would this be something that we would undertake, purchasing more land to, to sell to somebody else at a future date? Um, I, I see the Vandervaart property being a, not so much industrial, but probably a you know, in particular, if you decide to parcel a portion of it off for the police station, it's shifting over to some type of commercial office use. And that it would be similar to South Pier where you acquired property, you had some maybe environmental and soil conditions that you had to deal with, and then you market that property. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burton. Thank you, Paula. Alderman Dan Burke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Paulette, uh, RCS 
wanted to land out there, didn't he? They, I think at one time they were interested in this Vanderbart property. Or, or are they interested in something in the industrial park? Not at this point. It looks as if they're but going they to were. expand. They how, were at one time. How many acres did they want? It was that 14-acre parcel. The full 14? Yes. Maybe they don't need that much. Thank you, Alderman Danberg. Any further questions? Is there anybody in the audience that would like to ask Mr. Tietink questions about the Vandervart property or any of us about this particular item on the agenda, the Vandervart property? Yes, Madam Chair. Oh. I'd like to know if there was ever any gas tanks or oil tanks on that. Were there ever any gas tanks or oil tanks on this property? And if there were, were they removed? And have they been cleared? I, I think Mr. It isn't a, can we do this? Because it isn't a council meeting, it's a committee meeting. I don't know. Let's open the floor. I move to open the floor to the, to the citizens. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, is there a discussion on that? Alderman Serda, discussion you, on whether Chair. to open the floor or not. I just think courtesy to Vandervart, I, I think, did you discuss with them that they would be taking um, questions from the gallery? No, just questions. But in that, I, I would, just because we've had the county here and that wasn't, we didn't give the same courtesy to the people in the gallery for the county that it was, and I think maybe just planning ahead of time, courtesy to Vandervart, that we should probably have notified them sooner than that. So I will be voting no. Ask him if he has any objections. Uh, Mr. Keating, do you have any objections to answering questions from the citizens? None whatsoever. That's why I'm here. The mayor did tell me that this might be a question-filled period, and I felt that I needed to come and to answer um, the question. Uh, I addressed that, and yes, we did have gas tanks. We did have uh, diesel fuel tanks. Mr. Keating, we're going to have to vote on whether oh. or not to let you. Oh. Sorry. And we have a roll call vote on whether or not to open the floor to citizens. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess my feeling is this is a committee meeting, so there would be discussion without opening the floor, but I'd ask Steve if he could comment on that so that we know for future if we need to open the floor, if it's a committee meeting, if it's treated like other committee meetings, I just would like to know. Yes, Steve. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, the proper procedure would be to open the floor to uh, non uh, non committee members to to speak or to ask questions. Um, Steve, when we have other committee meetings, should we go through that procedure also? Uh, that's what I would advise. That's really the appropriate procedure. Uh, All right. You know, there's no right at at any council or, or committee meeting for the public to speak just without uh, the council or the committee uh, authorizing that at the, at the meeting, so. Thank you. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, just for the future, because I think there were individuals in the audience when the county was here that they would have been, they would have appreciated that same courtesy to ask the questions to the county, and they didn't get that. Thank you, Alderman Serda. <laughs> roll, uh, Sue, would you take the roll call? Oh, no, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Alderman Danburg. <laughs> Well, if you're going to have discussion from the audience and that, that, that should be listed on the agenda. It should say discussion or open, open questions to the gallery or whatever, and there's nothing like that on the agenda, so I'm not going to vote for this here. Attorney Steve McLean, could you address that? Uh, yes, from the open meeting standpoint, the, uh, the item of the Vandevart property is on the agenda. That's all you need. Uh, doesn't this isn't public forum you're not talking about other things you're talking strictly about the Vandervart property and I think that's that's fine uh, you wouldn't need to you know you don't have any problems from that standpoint thank you attorney McQueen is there any other discussion <coughs> on whether or not to open the floor roll call yes please Deberg no Eberg, aye. Serta, no. Graf, aye. Kittleson, aye. Manny, aye. Meyer, 
Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. And Vanderweel? Aye. Uh, vote is nine to four to open the floor. We will open the floor. Thank you, Mr. Teaching. You're welcome. To answer Mr. Mr. Monte de Moore's question, um, that was item four on my, that we did have underground fuel storage tanks Item five, I'm sorry. We did have underground fuel tanks. They were moved on, under PECFA, and we do have DNR closure reports on all of them. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Somebody else wanted to ask another question. Yes, Henry Capitillo. Yes. Henry, could you come to the microphone, please? He was kind of this name. And would you give us your name, please, Henry? Henry Capitello. And the question I have is, uh, I know that you had said that you had the property or you've been thinking about selling the property for the last eight years and within the last, I think, three years, you've actually had some offers for some people that were interested in it. And the people that were interested in the property... Excuse me, Henry, could you speak into the mic? Because I know you want okay. to speak to Mr. Tink, but we can't okay. hear that. Thank and you. And is... The cost that was um, negotiated or presented to the previous people that were interested was that a hundred thousand an, an acre for for those individuals, and um, apparently you weren't able to sell it. And will you still continue to market if the city does not purchase the property? To answer your question, it was about seven years ago, and it was a firm that wanted to put low-income housing on the property, and I think it was $75,000 an acre back then. But that was seven years ago, and prices have gone up, and we're just going off of what our appraised value is. Uh, if the city doesn't purchase this property, we will be going, we have contact realtors, and, and it's an ongoing basis. So. If the city doesn't purchase it and move ahead, there will be others, and we have more time to plan our move. Thank you, Mr. Tating. Gina, would you like to ask a question? Could you come to the microphone so we can hear everything? You just mentioned that the DNR gave you a release on underground storage tanks, and I was just wondering if the land will be sold as is, like um, the 23rd Street land would be, and there's going to be no kind of, you know, um, help if there is contamination, or will they stand behind the land if there is contamination found? To answer that question, I would say that uh, when speaking to our owner, the land is as is. We do have DNR closure reports where the tanks were brought out of the ground, tested, the ground was tested. Tanks were cut up and disposed of, and um, as I said, it's we have DNR closure reports that say everything's fine. It's always good to hear that the DNR said you're clean. We'd like to hear those words. No matter who buys it, if somebody else, if you keep it on uh, for sale, or if we land swap or purchase, it's good to hear that the DNR has said it's all right. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, just a minute, Citizen Montemayor, Citizen Warner would like to ask a question. All right, thank you, Madam Chairman, Council. Uh, yes, I, I heard one thing that I thought was very interesting, that Vandervoort has land outside the city right now that they could build on and put their business on, and if the city works out something with them, we could not only keep them in the city, paying taxes in the city, we could take a portion of that property and use it for the police station and sell the rest of it. And, and that's the, the thing I found very interesting about what this gentleman said. I think it's uh, something we should really consider. And I guess my question would be, are they very serious about staying in the city with their business, selling the land they own outside the city to someone else, and uh, doing a land swap deal with us? Thank you. Good question. I, I'm sorry, I was distracted, and the question was? <laughs> it was a All long right. one. <clears throat> Mr. Warner, would you come and restate your question, please? Basically, that, that you would be interested in making arrangements with the city to do a partial land swap and sell the rest of the land to the city. That way, keeping you in the city so your business continues to pay taxes in the city, and the city can sell the land probably uh, nine acres or so that 
to other businesses that would be in the city, probably at, at a higher value. So what I'm asking is your firm is very interested in trying to work something out like that to keep your business in the city of Sheboygan if possible. If I interpreted the question correctly, it was would we sell a partial of the property, correct? No, I, I well, think... Well, okay. If we work out... In other words, if the city had 14 acres, would we swap 14 acres? That would be a no. Uh, our owner is adamant about selling the complete 15 acres. Something that is interest to me and maybe our owner is the fact that you have property outside of the city, which is fairly close to the property that he has purchased, and there might be a possibility of a land swap on the outside of the city situation in conjunction with the land we have. Um, Another new twist. Mm -hmm. Another twist. But these are all things that we're trying to hammer out. And, and uh, but, but our owner is very adamant that 15 acres, he's not going to divide it. And he welcomes the city to do that. I think that um, Mr. Warner was asking, I think he was asking the question, uh, if we were to go ahead and purchase your land and do a swap, how interested are you in consolidating in the city limits so you would still be taxpayer to the city? It, it's a strong possibility. I think I, was that the question? Correct. Yes. The other thing I'd like to add is that we do have a phase one environmental completed on the property also. So of course then you go to phase two and then that gets a little bit more stringent. So we do have a phase one. Thank you. Any further questions? Citizen. Uh, yes, Citizen Montemayor. <laughs> yes. He doesn't have to move very much. I, I would just like to say that I wouldn't ask this question about the oil tanks if I'd had the information in front of me. I understand that you have it, but I don't have it. Okay, and that, that's, that's the reason I asked the question. Thank you. Uh, oh. Yes, Mr. Capitillo, and then you. Since you, you already have property, and apparently that is probably in the town of Sheboygan, um, and you would consider a swap of property that's close to that, would you consider possibly uh, doing the swap, and because of you already having property there, it would be more appealing for you to, to do that. Would you considering selling it at less than the 100000 per acre? You guys are tough. <laughs> I mean, that question has been money. phrased 10 money. different ways. Once again, our owner is adamant that, that it's 100000 but of course, that's something that could be addressed. In, in these these days and times, it's always the money. Yes, Alderman Graf. Thank you. Uh, this question is for the, the police chief, who happens to be in our audience. Um, if, if the city were to pur purchase his parcel, I know you and a group of your officers had looked at, at various sites and so forth. I don't know if you looked at this particular one, or I know at one point in time your office had said that this, this would, was the, the first choice of the police department. Where would you want to build the police station on this particular site? And I don't know if you have a copy of this, this map or not that we have. Um, yeah. I, I'll provide them one. We'll take the entire yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> we have taken a look at this. Uh, at, the, at that time, we thought there was 18 to 19 acres. It was difficult to say how much acreage there was. We would like to stay on top, on, on the high ground. However, I've learned that we need to sit down with Zimmerman Design Group or some other entity to tell us the advantages and disadvantages of this or that. It would make sense to us to stay high. So parcel number, parcel number two, okay, all right. You'd be talking on the west end of parcel number two, possibly, uh, 
We had one time looked at office site parcel number three. However, there, there appears to be some interest in that. Uh, most of this, as other discussions are, uh, need to be held with uh, architects and things of that nature. But we would like to stay high if you want a basic answer. Thank you. Thank you. And then, if I may, uh, for either Tom or, or Paul, the railroad tracks that run through there, they're still used, correct? Or? I don't think they've been used for three or four years, but they have not been uh, abandoned. Abandoned. Right. And what would be the process to abandon? We tried. Metal? Or wouldn't we need to do that? Well, it, the parcel, I think, would be uh, more valuable without that railroad spur in there. But we tried two occasions to get that abandoned so we wouldn't have to build that retaining wall along business drive. We couldn't do it. So it, It's quite a process to get that abandoned. Thank you. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, just a quick question here. When we were out at the Vandervart property initially when we had our talks with Mr. Harvey and his people, they had talked about parcel number three where their office now sits. South 15th Street has been abandoned in that area. I can't remember if South 16th Street was abandoned near the materials uh, showroom. But the question is, if we should buy this parcel of property, would you be willing to give up you know, those, those streets so we can reopen them so we would have access back into that property? Because right now, there is no access other than those two driveways right there, and they're both vacated right there, and those parcels are not included with this parcel. Correct. Uh, I would say that parcel number one, uh, it was South 16th Street that I petitioned to be abandoned about four years ago. <laughs> because our gate came across there, and um, that wouldn't be a problem. And same with 15th Street, uh, that comes in, and of course, it would probably be beneficial for us to have you do that, not only for the utilities and the plowing and the like, so I would say that that would probably be a yes, okay. most likely. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Did that answer your question, Alderman Vanderweel? I saw your light. Yes, I'll hold my All right. Thank you. I do want to ask, seeing these people that are standing out there in case they want to ask any questions. I, I see the congregation at the door there. Do you want to come in and sit down, or do you have questions of Mr. Teaching? Citizen Montemayor again, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I, this is more of a kind of a legal question because this has been mentioned before. Seeing there's railroad tracks there, how close can you build a police station to a railroad track? That's my question. Thank you. Good question. I'll bet Tom Holton may know the answer, or <laughs> Chief Kirk, or Paulette, or somebody. I know when we constructed that retaining wall, we had to be 20 feet off the center of the tracks. Now, I don't know if the railroad would look at that a building the same as a retaining wall or not, but it wouldn't be any closer than that, I can tell you that. So it's the railroad that has the, the oh, yes. rules. Yes. There aren't any particular police station rules about railroad tracks. There may be if you have some hazardous materials or explosives going by. I don't know about that, but as far as the railroad sets the standards out for structures going up against them. Chief Kirk, do you know of any uh, restrictions on building police stations close to railroad tracks? No. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Perfect answer. That's, that's I don't know of any laws or right. restrictions. However, when you discuss police departments, you attempt to keep them away from any railroad crossing, things of that nature, where if, in fact, if the tracks are operational, you then just have cut off one exit to the rest of the city. Uh, so that, my understanding yet, uh, the, the tracks are still in existence, yet not operational. So that may be one answer. But as, as you study, uh, as you look at police departments, please, we try to keep them away from tracks, unless, of course, you have a high ground and you go over a bridge to get over the tracks. So. 
Thank you, Chief. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, now, when it comes to um, the railroad tracks and that, now is it just a police station or is it any building? Because now we sold property out on South Taylor Drive and there's building put up there. Is that 20 feet away from the railroad tracks where that's being built? I'm not sure which building you're talking about I on think Taylor it's, Drive. Uh, it's South Taylor Drive. I think it was Tom Schaefer's. That's, that's more, that'd be more than 20 feet off that. That right away out there, I believe, is probably 100 feet wide. Okay. So it's more than 20 feet off the center line okay. of tracks. Now the railroad tracks on um, South Business Drive there, do they not end by Broadway Avenue because you put the new street and took away the viaduct? So that that's that's not operational anymore. Right, then. but the railroad just has to say we want to get through there. The tracks have to go back in. So whose expense is that if they were There's a deal with the DOT and us that's a 90% DOT, 10% city. And that's, it's, chances are that tracks won't go back in there, so we took that gamble. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Van Der Weel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll just talk about railroad tracks. I just wanted to say with my experience, it's next to impossible to do anything with the railroad tracks because if, if they want it back, you have to give it back. So for us to even build on them or near them or anything like that is pretty much not going to happen. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Berg. Alderman Groff. No, Alderman Berg. Alderman Dan Berg. Dan Berg. Chief, you said that you would, if you don't mind. You said you would prefer the high ground to the west. Correct. So you're not going to be anywhere near the railroad track there. You'll be plenty. You'll have a lot of distance from the railroad track. Certainly. As, as we uh, examined, or examined, examined the, uh, the area, we took a look at the tracks, and we said we want to stay away from the tracks for, for that particular reason. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Groff. One more question regarding the railroad tracks. But can, is there any possibility of us um, declaring eminent domain and uh, condemning those or anything like that? We, we're not allowed to do that. No, we can't do that. Okay. I mean, they take precedent. If they cross our street right of ways, they take precedent over our street right of ways. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, you've been dealing with the railroad, so you certainly know. Yes, Paulette. I also wanted to mention that we did consider any type of active lines as a barrier when we looked at the, you know, the various scores for the siting of the police stations. Okay. Active lines. Thank you. Thank you. Oliver Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Paulette, this question is for you. You said active lines. What do you consider an active line? Is the line going across Broadway at South Business Drive? considered an active line even though the tracks are not currently in place in that intersection if it's not abandoned it's an active line okay because it possibly could be reinstated yeah, and, and obviously some are more active than others I mean, and that was one of the issues i think in that um, the former dump site in in that area in the cargill area thank you paula thank you alderman radke any further discussion, any further questions about the Vandervaart site? Lots to think about, lots to work on yet. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I would make a motion then that RO number 1740506 be placed on file. Do I hear a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion and the second to place this on file, to accept the information and place this on file? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Our, Madam, yes, Alderman Graf. Madam Chairman, um, because of the, the time, I would move that we hold items six and seven to a future committee of the whole meeting, and, um, and um, I would make that in the form of a motion. No, I second. I think it's a good idea. Any discussion on that? on the motion to hold items six and seven to a future committee of the whole meeting? <laughs> Alderman Serda. Um, I had 
asked you several times to invite Mr. Wangeman, and maybe the media is aware of this too. I am trying and trying to get this issue to be talked about. I actually have people in the gallery that came here, and I think that we, if we have to put in some extra time tonight, let's go ahead and do so. Let's just put in that effort, because these people now have come, and we've been trying to deal with this issue for a while. I, th I think we would have to c continue the committee of the whole meeting after the council meeting, if we were to do that. Any other discussion? Can't we run longer and just, no. No, we cannot. We have to start the council meeting at 7. May I, is there? Yes. If, um, if we set up a committee of the whole meeting for um, specifically for the municipal court, right. how can we do that? Um, and maybe they, they would be able to come at that time. Can I ask why nobody made reference to this before, given that we knew Vanderbart was going to be here? And what we can do, too, we can maybe start the discussion and maybe not vote on it and then just hold it over to another committee meeting, at, le at least get started. We certainly could have them speak with time restriction. I would hate to do that to them. Well, we you shouldn't know, have put them on two the minutes, agenda. Three minutes, perhaps that would have been the that best thing That probably would not. have been smart. Yes. And I'm sorry, I, I put the agenda together when the chairman was gone, and I just threw these things that were in the, in the file folder on the agenda, thinking we, we could get through as much as we possibly could. But the time limit I had given uh, the Vanderbart people was uh, between 5.45 and, and um, 6.45, ending at 6.45. Now, I don't know if you want to listen, if there's somebody that can speak for seven minutes or, or what, but. I say we got 20 minutes on the clock yet or more. Let them talk, and if we have to hold it over for another committee meeting, we can do so. But we need we to get, get out of here early because we've got agenda documents to sign and several other things to, to do before we can start a committee of our council meeting. Well, instead of debating this, let's have the vote about whether to, um, to hold this for a future meeting. And Alderman Dan Berg wants to speak on that, that motion. Uh, the gentlemen that are going to be are here tonight for the municipal court. Is it possible for you to come back for the next? Ron? No problem. No problem? Well, there's the three said they would be, they'd come back for the next one. Thank you, Alderman Dan Berg. But it should be noted on the agenda then too. Yes, please put that them in the That would be our only item on the agenda then. I think that's the best for a committee of the whole to have one big item. Thank right. you, Alderman Danberg. Any further discussion on whether or not <laughs> to hold items six and seven? All those in favor of holding, vote signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. Motion carried. I would move to adjourn. Uh, excuse me, are we going to act on, you still have number five? We have would to you like accept. to do with that? We have to accept number five. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would move that we um, accept and adopt the um, accept. RO number, or accept and file. file, RO number 1750506 regarding the draft of the Zimmerman report. We have a second on that? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Which, this means we accept the information that they gave to us. That's all this means, is we accept the information they gave to us. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. I need to motion to adjourn. I didn't hear I, who made the, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear who made the motion to adjourn previous. I would make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you so much for turning out. Thank <laughs> you.